Good morning, students. I will be your biology teacher for today, and the topic is freshwater habitat. Lesson objectives. By the end of today's lesson, you will be able to one state why freshwater habitat is characterized thus. Two, discuss majorly on types of freshwater. Three, identify various organisms in freshwater habitat. Contents. One, characteristics of freshwater habitat. Two, types of freshwater. One, stagnant water. Two, running water. Three, freshwater organisms. Now let's look at characteristics. Characteristics of freshwater habitats. The freshwater habitat includes the lakes, ponds, streams, springs, and rivers. These water bodies are known for low salt content and low salinity. What does that mean? It means that the contents of the salt in that kind of body of water is very, very mild. The animals and plants in freshwater habitat vary from the ones in the extreme habitat. This is due to the salinity factor. That is the amount of salt present in the body of water. Some characteristics of freshwater habitat include 1. It has low salt content, just the way I've explained it. The amount of salt present in this freshwater habitat is very, very little. 2. Relatively small body of water. The body of water is not as big as we have in extra or in uh, marine water. Three, the water is shallow, which means the deep, the water is not too deep. Four, its temperature varies with depth and season. The temperature of the water, of this kind of body of water, depends on the how deep the water is and the season of the particular period. Five, it has low density water. The density of the water is very low. Three, six, turbidity depends on the season of that particular period. What is turbidity? That is the cloudiness and haziness of the body of the water. Seven, there is available oxygen in all parts of water, but more at the surface. Which means because of the body of the water that is not too deep, is shallow, then there is availability of oxygen in every part of the water. But it is common, it is much at the surface of the water. Eight, freshwater habitat accommodates bony fishes like tilapia fish you have tilapia fish they are common in the freshwater habitat now students based on the characteristics of freshwater habitat we have mentioned can you describe the body of fresh water can you describe the body of fresh water now types of uh, fresh water we have stagnant water which is known as lentic example pools pond puddles and lakes the second one running water examples running water can also be called lotic water examples are springs, streams, 
and rivers. Take a typical, a cursory look at this picture. This is a typical example of stagnant water. We shall continue from the fresh water organism after break. Thank you. You are welcome back. Now let's look at the freshwater organisms. Zone in freshwater habitat. In freshwater habitats, there are four major zones. So based on that zone, we are going to look at different organisms that are found in the in each zone. One, the edge of the water. Two, the water surface. Three, the body of water form for the bottom of the water. Now, fresh water, some organisms. We have some organisms in fresh water, which include plants and animals. So let's look at the plants. And we are talking about the plants. We have plants like grasses, raffia palm, algae, bamboos, sedges, water lettuce, dark weed, microscopic plankton, water hyacinths, submerged plants such as phytoplankton, like agate as earlier mentioned, ceratophyllum species, bacteria, water lilies, Spirogyra, hornwort, and bladderwort. When you look at the diagram below, you see how we group them. You see this one, this area. You see the uh, the the the, the um, different uh, zones of the water. You see the surface of the water, the top of the water. You see the bottom of the water. So those organisms they are found according to the zones that we have listed. Now, animals. Examples of animals include crabs, water snails, dragonflies, water snakes, toads, frogs, mosquito, lava pupa, water scorpion, tadpoles, water bugs, diving beetles, we have fishes like tilapia, and flatworms are present there, sea insect larva, mollusk, worms, copods, water skaters, water beetles, mudfish, Catfish, planarian, and dragonfly nails. So, and we have the drawing, uh, the, the diagram showing most of the animals that we mentioned. When you look at the left of the diagram, at the stream source, you see animals that are able to withstand both the cold and the rapid currents of the strong headwater. Because they find themselves attached to something. There are some organisms, especially the smaller ones, have, have they have hooks. They have hooks, they have suckers that help them to cling to the rocks. And you see the rock. Most of them have streamlined bodies. Most of the animals here they have streamlined body that minimize drag. Then when you look at the right side, you see the free moving, free swimming animals, free swimming organisms. The lower, the lower areas of the stream, you see them around that area. Those are the organisms that are found in the freshwater habitat. Now, students, I would like you to tell us or mention those organisms that are found at the various zones of the freshwater habitat. You know, we mentioned about four uh, major zones, the edge, water. So I want you to classify them based on the 
zones, the edge of the water, the water surface, the body of the water, and the bottom of the water. What are those organisms that could be found in different zones of the organisms? In different zones of the habitat, freshwater habitat. We shall continue after break. Thank you. You are welcome back. Now let's look at the adaptation of organisms to fresh water. The features of organisms that structurally and physiologically, behaviorally fit them for life in their particular habitats. That is their adaptive features. What made them to improve their chances of survival in that environment? So when you are defining them, so they can ask you what is adaptation or what is adaptive features. They are for those features of organism which structurally, physiologically, and behaviorally fit them for life in their particular habitats and improve their chances of survival. That is the adaptation. Now, most of these organisms are adapted to the environment in the following ways. One, some animals attached to stationary objects that are found in the, in the environment, in the water environment, by adhesive structure. Most of them have suckers, for example, like leech, water leech. It, they have uh, suckers. They have food, like water snail. Then, mayflower limb also have hooked claws. And that is what enables them to attach to the stationary object like rock so that when there is wave or when there is any tide they were attached to that and they are not being swept away then two most submerged water plants most submerged water plants have extensive parenchyma they have extensive parenchyma with large air spaces they have ex extensive parenchyma with large air spaces which enable oxygen to diffuse to all parts of the plant during photosynthesis. Most of them have extensive parenchyma with large air spaces which enable oxygen to diffuse to all parts of the plants, all parts of their body during photosynthesis that enable them to carry out the process of the photosynthesis. Three, they have crustaceans. Crustaceans, they use antenna glands. They have, when you look at them, they have antenna glands. They use it as their osmoregulatory organ, which means for their osmoregulatory organ to regulate osmotic content of the water. Of the environment that they find themselves. Four, they have long fishes, for example, protopteros. They use gills for respiration, but when the water dries up, they dig into the mud and breathe with lungs until it rains again. Then the fifth one, the presence of uh, chloroplasts. The presence of chloroplasts in the epidermal cells of leaves and stems of submerged plants enable them to carry out photosynthesis process. Presence of chloroplast. No chloroplast is the is what makes them to have the green pigment. Is that is a is a green pigment in them that will enable them to carry out the photosynthesis process. Then the sixth one most animals here have streamlined body and is typical of many animals from insect larva to fish which enable them for to carry out the swimming uh, uh, swimming process is enable them to swim in the water the seventh one roots are shorter in most plants roots are shorter and less they have less branch then some, there are some plants that are rootless. Rootless are devoid of root hairs for support. When they, have, when they don't have um, roots, it supports them in the water so that they can be able to, to have uh, the stamina. 
then eight we have submerged plants these submerged plants absorb water and nutrients directly due to lack of a cortical due to lack of a cortical so when you look at this diagram also you see what we have been discussing about so far we have learned why fresh water is characterized us and their type we have learned about different organisms thank you we shall continue in the next class